continuing my series of playthroughs of the different racing simulators out there. This is my playthrough of Brands Hatch or Rotohawk, as you can see there, with the Ford GT40 or FMC GT4 in Speed Dreams. So here I'm going to take this rather heavy version, not so much of the GT40, but the Ford GT through their reasonably accurate portrayal of Brands Hatch. I had to hold the car back for pretty much the whole run because its handling is not up to its straight line performance. I have heard that the real 4 GT is a little bit too heavy and that's the impression that you get from the simulation. I don't know how accurate it is though because it drifts reasonably well and usually cars like the GT and the GT40 that have their weight distributed pretty far to the rear don't drift very well, they tend to spin. And I did have to make a serious effort at this. At one point I actually go off the track as you'll see. But for the most part I actually like this in the environment of speed dreams because so few of the cars can drift properly that this one's a little bit of a relief actually. This track is, you know, as always, very, very difficult. It's hilly, it's narrow somewhat, certainly very, very curvy, although not as curvy as it seems. I think that the hills tend to exaggerate the effect, so you feel like you're on a much curvier track than you really are. And an additional deceptive aspect of that is that you can actually get going, you know, 120, 130 miles an hour if you have a pretty fast car. So the result is that the curves can catch you by surprise. With this car, you basically have to really think about braking. And rather than trying to drive it fast, you should try to drive it slow, within reason, of course. You have to think in terms of being slow instead of being fast. It's not even a matter of smooth being fast. It's just a matter of you have to drive it slower than you think you can drive it. And I'm actually surprised watching the video, I mean, I'm dubbing this in later, I'm surprised to see how fast I'm actually going. This is actually a reasonably respectable set of laps. But the times are slower than in Torx, and I think the reason is just that Torx is trying to simulate the real GT40, even if it makes a number of mistakes. Whereas in Speed Dreams, they're more trying to simulate the GT. And the GT, as I said, doesn't get the best reviews. I mean, it is very, very fast in a straight line, but it's just not the equal of the GT40, which is crazy because the GT40 is from the 60s and the GT is from the early 2000s. Uh, this is just a simulation. And like I said, I don't know how accurate it is, because it seems like it drifts too well. I am gradually relearning how to use a race line. that helped get me through this playthrough. So, final lap. Even a pretty fast lap in Brands Hatch, in real life or in the simulation, will be a minute and a half, and in this case I'm doing a minute 49 for every single lap. So, the laps take a while, actually. A fast lap is not actually over as fast as you expect it to be. You have to actually concentrate on Brands Hatch. Even three laps, you know. This playthrough video adds up to over six minutes for just three laps. So that's worth thinking about. under 
this bridge. This is one of the fastest sections of the track right here. So you have to be careful to brake at the end because you're coming up a grade and your brakes will not work 100%. Even though you think that gravity would help you in that instance, my experience is it unbalances the car and so just like going downhill, you have to be careful. So these curves are easier than they look and then the last one, which is the chicane, is harder than it looks. I just made that look easy. That is not easy. Break. This sweeping curve is also deceptively difficult. Almost go into the pit there, and then I just barely make it over the finish line. And then you hit enter for results, and there are the results. 149 for every lap. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.